What's up, purists? Let's talk about something that happened last week. It kind of uh, made some waves in the whole Celine community, um, somewhat in the Fox Body community. Well, first off, I'm Bob from Pierce Motorsports, and thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe if you haven't yet, if you've watched it multiple times, or take a look at some of the other videos we've done. Uh, it's uh, all about Celine's at this point. That's what you're gonna find on the channel. And what's interesting to me is that nobody has talked about what happened last week. And this happened, and we'll show you a screenshot. Yes, that is a 1993 Celine SC that brought $226,000 before fees, before delivery at a public auction. Now, before we get into why would somebody pay that much money for a car? Why would it be worth it? It's just a Fox Mustang. Uh, it is more than just a Fox Mustang. Uh, to the point of making the Porsche guys go, what's making that car so special? So let's break it down just a little bit. Um, the 93 model year had just over 100 cars built for in Celine. 92 had 17 cars built. Um, so 92 and 93 are above and beyond the other production years as far as rarity combined. The SSC model, 1989, there are 161 of those. That model alone in 1989 actually has more units produced than 92 and 93 combined total. 92 and 93 are separate because you could actually check a box and get a supercharger. So the supercharged cars in 92 and 93 are actually even rarer than the 120 some odd I just mentioned. Then you get into the SC models and that does not mean supercharged, FYI. SC was a model up from the regular Celine and the supercharged Celine. The motor actually had modifications done to it. Um, so the car that sold was one of three convertibles, one of four 93s converted into SCs, one of five, that's a weird one, five total 93 SCs. One of the five, car number 11, was actually a numbered car prior to that. Its chassis is not a 93. That is a whole nother discussion that we could have about it. But I think it's very important to bring to light why that car hammered for $226,000. It is very, very, very rare. Now, does that make anything worth more as far as Celines go, Fox Celines go? I do, I believe that brings everything up a little. Also, I will say this, I am giving you a lot of information and a lot of people are actually kind of giving me credit for the information, which is, I need to give credit where credit's due. I'm parroting a little bit of the information I offer you guys, a lot of the information I offer you guys. Uh, parroting meaning that what I have learned and I'm trying to be accurate in giving it to you. Uh, a lot of people online these days parrot information and by that that means they have been told something and they repeat it and then they post it and then all of a sudden they're an expert. I am trying to bring to you all the people that were in the Celine world a long time ago, 30 years ago or more. And well, I, I, three of them come to mind, uh, the guys that actually made the book. Um, other than Brad Bowling, Brad was the kind of the key guy behind publishing because he did pictures and that kind of stuff and gathered a lot of the uh, artwork and most of the information. Um, so if you look at him, he worked for Celine. The other, Greg Wackett, he also was working for Celine for a little while. Uh, he was a part in that Celine book that was done almost 20 years ago now. Stu Akers, who kind of falls under the radar. A lot of people that are new to the Celine community, um, you will probably hear his name sooner or later. Uh, he has uh, quite the collection and has been restoring the rare cars and is very knowledgeable, has firsthand knowledge. 
Um, and then, of course, you've seen him on my channel, and this is a part of the reason I actually approached him. Uh, Mark has built a legitimate business out of this, and it's Mark Lamaskin. Uh, he has built a legitimate business out of the Celine cars in that he, um, well, he's owned thousands of them over the last 25 plus years. And uh, those guys that I just mentioned actually talked with production people. They are literally a text, a phone call away from Liz or Steve. They know the people. They know the history firsthand. And that's important. They're first-hand people. They're not parroting information. They're telling you firsthand what they know because they were there. Uh, I know that um, Team Celine, Greg was one of the initial members in getting that started in like 89 or 90. Um, so you, you could go way back and there are more people that are even you know, involved in firsthand, like Jimmy Moore, those kinds of things. So, my point is this, a lot of people parrot information online and it's easy to do in today's world where even in a video, if, I, if I'm done something with Mark, somebody could take that information and act as if it was their own and they're, they're an expert. So to me, it's very important to get those people who were involved many years ago and have actually owned a lot of these cars, worked a lot of these cars, maybe even potentially built some of these cars it's very important to be able to get that information firsthand because when people parrot information, uh, it's kind of like the telephone game, things can get transformed through time. To me, the explanation is this, when you combine rare and you get two people who want it, you get a big number. And I, instead of me talking about it, I think I would rather just Let's sit down and, and actually have a conversation with Mark about it. Now I am about nine hours, eight to nine hours away from his shop. So it's not easy for me to just hop in and go and take care of this. So we're actually gonna do this over a Zoom meeting. And I think it's important enough for us to talk about because I mean, let's be honest, $226,000 for a Fox. There are a lot of other cars that can be bought for that kind of money. Uh, ones that truthfully by the numbers would outperform a Fox Celine Mustang, GT3 Porsche comes to mind, um, a Lamborghini. There's a lot of other things that could be bought for 226 plus thousand dollars. We'll call it, you know, almost a quarter of a million dollars for a Fox Mustang. It's a special car. So I want to let's let's talk with Mark because I think he has a lot of insight on what we have in front of us that nobody's talking about. I haven't seen anybody on YouTube even mention this. And truthfully, this is a ripple effect all through the Fox community, especially the Celine community. So we've got to talk about it. And I, I want us to sit down with Mark. Well, Mark, thanks for taking time with me on this. I, you know, with us being so far apart, I felt it was important to kind of do this uh, this way to talk about it because it's kind of time sensitive in a sense. Um, mm -hmm. And we have to schedule in advance our visits because we're eight to nine hours apart. We um, are. But um, I think... I wanted to get your perspective on the auction results. I know it was pretty shocking to a lot of people. I don't think it was too shocking to say you or I or some, some others that were probably closer to the Celine, um, I guess you could say hobby, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, there's a lot of um, mystery mystique around a number like that, right? When you have something that pins a pretty big number. Well, it's a, it's a lot of mystery and mystique around a number like that when you've never seen any other car in the Fox Body Arena bring that money. But with you and I being around the community and, and like some other people have said in the past, a lot of the cars are under the radar sales. A $100,000 Fox Body in the last year and a half to two years is really not that unique. Now, a $226,000 car Definitely. But it wasn't like it happened overnight that all of a sudden, you know, this this particular car would brought that kind of money from being worth, let's say, thirty thousand dollars. And now it's worth two hundred and twenty you know, five or two hundred and twenty six plus the five thousand dollar you know, fee that that bring a trailer charges too. right. Right. You've got the fees and delivery on top of that. Um, right. And I think it's like you said, that there's a lot that's been happening behind the scenes. Um, private sales that happen. And I know that you, you're uh, in that arena on a daily basis. And, and I think it's, 
the car started out as something unique and something when it was right. older, you know, so I think you've said it before, like that, that's uh, Porsche money or Ferrari money back in 93, 94. It was, it was to have that kind of money to, to go in and buy a Mustang. Uh, I don't even know if the finance companies would have even written the paper on that. I think you would have had to, to pay the difference on it. So there was a lot of stuff to choose from for basically $50,000 back in 1993. And for somebody to have chosen that car is you know, pretty cool. But, um, and, and they didn't make very many of them. So obviously it was a matter of also you know, uh, money. And remember 92 and 93, like we've talked in the past, we were still kind of in a recessionary period and uh, people were just starting to spend money again. Yeah, and it, 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 it's, you mentioned it touched on the rarity of the car. Mm -hmm. I've mentioned it in the video prior to us talking. Uh, why don't you put it into your words, like how that breakdown goes? Because, I mean, not, not every Fox Celine is going to break into that category. No, no that's probably the, the number one question uh, that I would get, either email or text, is like, oh, my God, now what is my car worth? And it's like, whoa, 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 hold your horses. Um, did it, does this sale affect the value of all the cars? It certainly does, but it does not affect it in the sense that other people think that it did, okay? A lot of people don't understand that this was a, an SC model, okay? In, in um, 90, Celine built, you know, we talked about it in one of the videos, an SC model. So they did them in 90, 91, they didn't do any in 92, and then did it in 93. So it's not the same as a standard production Mustang. There was something online last week, a gentleman was gonna list a car for sale, and he said it was his 93 SC, convertible. Well, it's not an SC. It's a supercharged 93 convertible. So that was an option on the 92 and 93 cars that you could order a supercharger. And, you know, in people's defense, it is a little confusing the way Celine marketed a lot of this stuff and what people say it is. Um, but it's not the same car. It's kind of like comparing a 93 Cobra R model to a standard 93 Cobra. There's that much difference in value. Right. And, right. You, and unique and uniqueness. Yeah. And, it, you know, when you get down to where, you know, even with the Cobra R production, you're into that, you know, 100, 107, 107 um, th that 107 is a number that's actually larger than total 93 Celine production. Correct. But segueing back, I'm, I'm going to finish my thought here before I, I get off track, yep. is that does it affect the value of the base car? Sure, it does, because it opens the market up to a different buyer. OK, a gentleman or a lady, I should say, that can afford a two hundred and twenty six thousand dollar car is a lot different than it was in the last couple of years. So those people of that economic um, segment start looking at going, well, this is a pretty cool car. Maybe that's a good investment, too. And it sort of affects the market from a standpoint of it pushes a lot of times the enthusiast out of it and then pulls the investor into it which I've been involved in for many years. I've got several collections I manage that are investors and they bought these cars early to hold them thinking that they were going to go up in value like the Shelby's and everything else. But again, how does this affect your 88 Celine Mustang with 20,000 miles on it that's pristine mint and has all the documentation? I think it makes it worth more money. Does it double or triple it in value? No, the market will dictate that. Because the minute this car sold, everybody's dusting their stuff off in the garage going, oh, my God, I need to sell my car and I'm going to retire and buy a house in Boca. No, not necessarily. But, you know, time will tell. And again, like we've always said, buy the best of the best, original paint, original parts, documentation, no excuses cars. Yeah, well, it's, so. uh, you say documentation. I mean, you can look at the auction results there and click on the pictures, you know, the owner um from day one even when the car was being produced mm -hmm. took time to make documentation of the process all the way through uh ownership and and you know that that really sells a vehicle down the road but because, think about how hard you know, that is i don't mean to interrupt you but mm -hmm. think about how hard that is so back in the day you're old enough to remember when you would take pictures and you take this roll of film mm -hmm. to cvs and get it developed now you just pull up your cell phone and shoot a bunch of pictures so i'm hoping cars in the future, if I live that long, will have much more documentation because it's so much easier to do it. So for, for this gentleman to have had all that stuff is just mind blowing 
that not only did he take the pictures, but he still had all that stuff. Yeah. And you know? kn knowing him, he probably still had the negatives to him too, but. <laughs> well, I mean, we've talked before yeah. about the amount of times that people are like, well, I know I got this stuff somewhere. And it's like, if you don't get it the day you buy the car, you're never getting the paperwork. Yeah. And that's true mm -hmm. because that's, uh, I've actually had conversations with guys who have bought cars and they were promised the paperwork and then come down mm -hmm. the road. They, that previous owner made them pay for it. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. That, anyways, but it's, I, the, the, the thing as far as um, rarity is concerned in the Celine world, that, that there's such a wide varying range of, you know, entry, I, I would just, I don't know how else to put it, but entry level to Celine's to what just sold. I mean, that, that's a, a wide variance of, of, you know, I guess you project cars all the way up to what that car is. And there's a kind of a, a breakdown of that. And I think really with it, that's what was so shocking to most is because what you see mostly online are the regular production cars that get transferred and transaction. Right. And it really was shocking to the point of where even like Porsche guys, and you can read the comments over and bring a trailer. They were just like, why would anybody pay this for a car like this? you know, when you could go buy a GT3 or it's... But think um, about this, okay, in that same note, how many GT3s did Porsche build or GT3 RSs? But you're mm -hmm. looking at one of, you know, three or four cars. That's totally different. That's almost like trying to say it's a 959 of the Porsches or a one-off Kremer race car or something like that. Right. And I don't even think people have even thought that deep into it about how rare that car was right I, because people people get so caught up in the performance attributes of a car that the gt3 outperforms it on the track or whatever it, right when it comes down to it um it's the same p reason why someone would buy a rolex over a timex they mm -hmm. both do the same thing in a sense but one is is a different emotional purchase than say just buying it to use it well you know? the other the other thing um that amazes people when i talk to them is that this that car might not ever be driven yeah. and they're like what do you mean I, how could you have a car not drive it it's real easy i've got a bunch of them sitting back there that have little miles that, that cadillac right there you see in the back that's a uh, neiman marcus uh 04 cadillac belongs to a client we've got it on one of the auction sites now with 23 miles on it. yeah i mean you know and whoever buys it's not going to drive that car now that's a little bit different than you know a 93 sc with eleven thousand miles you know, the new owner of that car might drive it some, but it's not like they're going to be taking it out and driving it on Sundays and doing that sort of stuff. Because typically a guy that can afford or a lady that can afford a car like that's got a bunch of other ones too. And they're working so hard a lot of times, unless they're a trust fund baby, that they don't even have time to drive the cars. Mm -hmm. They just want to know that they've got it and walk out to the garage and show their buddies, hey, look at this one-off car. This is the car that I wanted in high school or in college that I could never afford. And mm -hmm. um, no one else is going to have this car because they made so few of them. Right. And that's, that, that's part of the, the lure of it. I mean, it's, I guess that's why I was kind of making it a comparison to Rolex because, you know, yeah. ro ro Rolex watches very unique and one of a kind. You walk into a room with that on and, and it's, it's something that mm -hmm. people see and recognize. Mm -hmm. I think it's just one of those things where it's like, that's, this, this is probably the precursor of what's to come potentially um and the market let's is hope hot. we've got a whole bunch of cars sitting there i'm hoping <laughs> they're going to do that but you know again it shows that that the, the there is the ability you know for these cars to hit the you know the stratospheric type of level but when you consider that people are paying over window sticker for brand new cars today is it stratospheric you know if you go to buy a brand new ford raptor uh the dealers went 10 or 20 grand over and people are paying it Yep. Um, you know, the GT500, when it came out with the carbon fiber package, people were paying exorbitant money for that. Um, but uh, it is nice to see that that the Celine has finally entered that collector realm and the value has gone up quite a bit. You yeah, know, I, 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 I keep saying it. Um, it's when the name becomes synonymous in household. You know, everybody, yeah. everybody knows Mario Andretti. My mom doesn't, it's not a race car fan fanatic of any stature at all, mm -hmm. not even NASCAR. And she knows who Mario Andretti is. So when you get to the level, like what Shelby has and Ford has helped Shelby, especially in the last right. two decades, when it's synonymous in the whole like household and people that aren't mm -hmm. into the car realm, know, yep. things go way up in value. And you get guys, just like you said, they were guys, I guarantee you, 
in the future, you will see a 959 parked next to a Fox Saline at some point in some collector's garage, because those are cars that are, are parallel in rarity. Um, mm -hmm. the, I guess that's the only way to say it, you know. Um, but I, I think it's just funny also that there's, I, I did a quick search on YouTube. Nobody has talked about this. Mm -hmm. There are 40 to 50 Fox body channels and nobody's talked about it at all. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that has reverberated out like beyond the Fox world. When you've got Porsche guys, Lamborghini guys and others commenting on the auction, right? But so, a lot of those guys, you got to remember, Bob, maybe had a Fox body when they were growing up. And yeah. now what's cool about this is it sort of allowed them if they wanted to buy a Fox car that it's accepted because, you know, Ooh. if they're around a bunch of their guys that have a bunch of money and they're like, why would you have a Fox body Celine when you've got a Lamborghini Huracan or, you know, uh, an Aston Martin? Well, that was a car I wanted in high school and I couldn't afford. Uh, years ago, I worked with a client that was in California and he had a really large collection of exotic cars. And then in the other room, it was all Fox body Celines. And his buddies would joke with him and go, what do you have these things for when you've got, you know, uh, a GT3 RS, uh, you know, a, a green one, and you've got all these other Ferraris to drive. And he's like, because that's what I wanted when I was in school. I never thought I'd achieve what I've been able to achieve in my life to afford the cars that are in the other room. But this was my dream. And uh, I think it's opened the door, uh, if the right word is allow, is to allow some of these guys that really have made it to be able to put that Fox body car, even if it's just a five liter LX coupe or a GT in the same garage and not be worried his buddies are going to give him a ration because he's got, you know, just some cheap car from the, the 80s and 90s in there with a supercar of today. Right, right. And I, I mean, I think when you get down to it, the performance numbers are irrelevant because it becomes an We're not driving lie. it, so it right. really doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. we've joked before because we talk all the time. You know, I'll drive one of my cars home, and I'm like, why in the world do I own this? My, my Ford truck I drive every day would just smoke it. But it brings back the memories of being a kid and driving the car and, you know, where I would go and things like that. And I enjoy just looking at the cars more than I do driving them. I mean, I'm 55, and I drove a Fox Body Celine or a Fox Body in general till I was 30. And I've got plenty of miles on those cars. I don't need to drive any more of them. Um, I don't mind. Yeah, I don't <laughs> mind driving them to cars and coffee and stuff like that. But it's not the creature comforts that I'm looking for. But we're not buying these cars as a just a car. It's part of the memory. It's the smells. It's the feel. Mm -hmm. It's you walk out there to look at it. You sit in it. And you're like, wow, I never thought I'd be able to have one of these cars, much less four of them. Well, and, and everything you're talking about right there is emotional. It's an emotional, yeah, it but that's is. what I mean by that. It, it brings yeah. joy to you to see it, to sit in it, not necessarily yeah. drive it because I mean, like you said, I mean, I drove uh, for probably 15 years. I drove a Fox every day mm -hmm. and by modern standards, it's very antiquated, yeah. but um, it, it's, it does bring back a lot of fun that you had. And that's what really brought the cars about was that they were inexpensive to buy and fairly inexpensive to modify to have fun. Mm -hmm. Um but I, anyways, I, I really appreciate you giving me your time today. I know it was short sure. notice, but um, I do think that it was something that we needed to talk about. And if there's anything else you need to add that I haven't asked you, feel free to say something if it comes to mind now. No, no. I mean, probably the only thing that, that I would maybe add to this is that people just need to make sure that they've got some sense of reality when they're trying to price their car and they're trying to think about what their car is worth. I would ad advise them to contact somebody and ask them what is the market and what is the car worth? Yeah. You know, so the market's definitely changed quite a bit. Um, this is the reason I started this business so long ago is that I looked at these cars and said to myself, what's gonna be the next, you know, Uber collectible car that guys of my generation would, would want? And like I said, I'm 55 and, you know, I drove one of these cars all through high school and through college. And, you know, again, people aren't driving these, they're buying them and putting them in the garage. And, and that is kind of alien to some people, but. Um, it's almost like it's a piece of art or a piece of, uh, you know, a childhood memory. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, it, it comes down to somewhat of an emotional purchase with driving. It is irrelevant. So, right. Um, right. Definitely. But uh, again, thanks for your time. And I know this is mm -hmm. short notice and um, um, just really wanted to be able to get your take on it directly. Um, that so that there's no, as I said it before, parroting involved that it's directly right. from you <laughs> and it's people hear it because um, it's valuable information. I think it's stuff that uh, 
which is what I want to offer. I want to try to help people make a sound decision or find a resource to get mm-hmm. a part restored or a uh, resource to get something replaced because uh, the cars are so few of them. There's what, just a few mm-hmm. of the 2,700 Fox Celine's made, um, which is not even just over half of 93 Cobra production. Um, so things can be challenging to get stuff on. And, and something like this kind of reverberates through this, the community. I, it's all over social media, but I find it odd that there is nothing on YouTube or any podcast talking about Until it. now. Until now. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it's great, Bob. And we need to bring attention to it because it is very exciting. It is a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, a benchmark, uh, you know, a, a plateau that we've now reached that we've had these cars cross into a different uh, arena of, of buyer. It's just people need to change their attitudes a little bit towards their cars and what they're worth. And don't forget to pick the phone up and call somebody or double check something. You know, I don't want you to sell your car too short, but I also don't want you to put it out on the market for some sort of ridiculous price and then get upset because, you know, it wouldn't bring $60,000 and it's not a $60,000 car. The people that are buying these cars for big money are, are very well educated and, just because you have that kind of money to buy a car doesn't mean you're just going to spend it on anything. Well, and they're going to use a resource like you to, to make sure that it is what it's supposed to be. Um, so, and that's, that's good. Cool. And then even to that, I've had probably three to four messages a day since that auction ended. Hey, do you know of a Fox Celine for sale? <laughs> so, or do you have oh, yeah. one for sale? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I get constant emails. Do you want to sell anything out of your car collection? And I said, well, we're working on maybe selling a few of the cars out, but I, I mean, I think there's still a whole lot of room for a lot of these cars to grow in value. Um, maybe not necessarily a, if I had a 93 SC car, I think that's sort of the plateau. It might go up a little bit more, right. but uh, I think the rest of them have a, a you know, are still need to get put on the elevator and go up, go on up, you know, yeah. Yeah. but there's still cars sitting in garages that people don't know what the market is. So keep looking and you might get lucky and find, you know, that quote unquote quintessential bar, barn find, and I almost said barf fine, but some of them you'd want to barf because you walk in there and see what kind of shape they're in. Um, and uh, sorry, I had to make you laugh a little I'm gonna bit. I'm going to make a shirt day. out of that. The barf yeah, fine. Barf, barf <laughs> fine. Yes. I'm just happy that none of the dogs have barked. It. There's one sitting in that chair right there. And there's actually five dogs that work with me today and not one barked at all. So that's pretty good. That is pretty but, good. Uh, they held their own. <laughs> oh, no, they definitely did. But, uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm glad you, you know, you asked me to do this and I, I've been besieged with phone calls too. And I, I'm happy to talk to people. It's just, people need to kind of take a, a little bit of a chill pill and calm down a little bit. And this isn't now I can't afford to buy a Celine Mustang anymore. It's coming, but you still have room and time to buy a car if you're looking for the right one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Well, thanks for your time, man. I really appreciate yep. you. Yep. As always. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I think that that's why I wanted to get Mark involved is for that very reason. What you're hearing from them is, uh, one, it's from a person who's actually been in business, dealing with these cars. He's actually making a living trying to uh, curate these cars truthfully to the right people, um, just like he has talked about. If you're looking to buy a Celine Mustang for the first time, you need to be talking to people like him because you need to know what you're buying. And in truth be told, uh, we'll be doing some videos upcoming on the challenges we're having with restoring this car. Um, at this point, there's about eight of these known Impressor cars. There's more of them out there somewhere, but there's only six to eight that I've found so far. I, I could count eight um, l- legitimately. So trying to restore this is a challenge too. Um, but I, I just wanted to bring Mark into the conversation because it's very important to hear firsthand from someone who's been in business dealing with these cars for so long. A lot of the stuff happens behind the scenes. There have been Celines that have been trading for hundreds of thousands of dollars for easily uh, the last, I don't know, almost decade. And with that, uh, just keep it going. Keep looking for that rare car and enjoy it. And as I always say, whether you're driving them or restoring them, always enjoy them. Peace.